We are back at the freight yard today. We're gonna be taking a look at the tags, the throws, and the pieces, of course, on these sort of moving art galleries. It's great that all of you guys are here to take a look at them, because this really is one of the best ways to learn about the culture in graffiti. I try and always tell everyone, one of the smartest things you can do as a graffiti artist is coming out to the freight yards to take a look at everything on these freights. It gives you such a holistic picture of graffiti in general. But as always, we like to talk a little bit about the tags and the throws and the pieces, of course, on these freights and get a feel for exactly how a lot of these writers are doing what they do stylistically i mean and of course that's what we'll be taking a look at today as well maybe we can have a conversation about what types of graffiti work on freights the very best here look at that nice anchor don't know exactly what that was done with it almost looks like a markal but it almost looks like the livestock markals or something like that i don't know what do you guys think you can go back take a look leave in the comments what you think that was great styles there by Expose or Expose. I do know he's up everywhere. A lot of times that bold sort of style, very simplistic, just two colors. That's what works really, really well on freights a lot of the time. Got Equal. We've seen Tark before here on the channel. That stuff's holding up pretty well considering 2019. And again, that's sort of what I'm talking about. Using these really effective color schemes like right here the red on blue if you look at a color wheel i believe red and blue are almost exactly right across from each other meaning they contrast really well really nicely contrasted colors like that are going to hold up even better over time and that's really what you want to see that's what you need Here's another brilliant example of that. You got a, a really light color, in this case the yellow is still very high value, mixed with a high value red. Beautiful contrast there. Yeah, Tonal's got the right idea. Let's go! You know Bonzo's always putting in great work here, but um, I haven't seen one of his throws before. This is actually the first throw from Bonzo I've seen. But again, while we're talking about color schemes, a white outline is pretty, pretty effective, especially if you're gonna do complicated fill like that. Like, I love this concept. It's really hard to pull off though, because most people simply don't know what colors go well together, but this works really well here. Loving this. Sup back at you, Bonzo. Well, that absolutely made my day. Another sled throw here. Some nice alone tags there. Sort of like almost a one-liner style, not quite there. That's almost what I like to see though. Like you can go out of your way to make something a one-liner, but if it's not gonna work, don't do it. And uh, never sacrifice style to make something a one-liner. Yeah, nice mop tag there. Just wanna remind everyone, Mops work great on this kind of thing as well. Got a nice Acto piece right here. We like to see that recent action. Doubling down on my point again here. Nice black on white works just so well. So well here, guys. Another nice thing about like black and white like this is you can use any other color to give it a bit of accent, a bit of flair, like he did with the, the greens there and the blues, and it just all works because whatever color you're throwing on there is the only color. Black and white are tones, or shades rather than colors, technically, so they go with any other color on their own.
This is another great example of if you're doing like a complex sort of mishmashy fill, just using a nice black outline or a nice white outline, just like the Bonds sort of throw we saw earlier. This makes it stand out. Perfect. But I'm gonna use that Acto piece to summarize the ways you can most effectively make a standout piece on a freight. Because if you're doing a freight, you do wanna have that visibility from many different distances. Like it's all good to see when you're up close and you can read everything, but a lot of people want that high visibility from far away. Especially if you wanna get some great clips of your freights actually moving. And there's about three main ways that I sort of mentioned here, but I'll summarize them. Number one, first thing you wanna do to get those high visibility freight pieces use high contrast black and white here is the highest contrast you can get we saw what was it tonal with a yellow and red in that instance he's using two very different tones to get that contrast my, my terms are a little fuzzy on there if I'm mislabeling that but that's the first way high contrast are these guys really back in a truck up right now So that was the first thing, high contrast. Secondly, in your fill-ins, simple fill-in, especially if you're using a simple fill-in with a high contrasting color scheme, that's when you really get that synergy between those two concepts. So high contrast, simple fill-in, and if you're really going for that high viz, you want those bold straight letter fonts. That third way is extra important to give you that visibility from range, especially. So those are the three main tips I can say for graph writers who are looking to make high visibility pieces that would translate well into a freight environment. I know it's been quite a while since we did one of these freight watching episodes. Believe it or not, we have so many more on the channel here. You can take a look at another one we did on screen right there. Some people keep asking me, where do I get a shirt like this? Merch shelf is right below the video or I'll link it in the description in case it's not showing up there for you. That way you can get yourself your very own tags, throws and pieces. Merch. I'll see you in another one soon. Till then, peace.